So Galia and I are back to do another video for you today and you're also going to have a chance at winning one of five samples of this and this is a review for Dior Privé Collection New Look 1947 this one right here. This was launched in 2010 and we're going to break it down for you coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Dahlia. And this is Sebastian. <laughs> uh, we're back with another video, as I said, and if this is your first time on this channel and or you've been watching videos here for a while and still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell icon so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And in this video, as I mentioned, we are doing a giveaway, five samples of New Look 1947 uh, for five subscribers of this channel who are in the USA. And Dahlia, are you familiar with the Privé collection from Christian Dior or Dior? I have. I've smelled through the Privé collection. What, what do you like? What's your favorite ones out of the collection? I like the Oud. Um, so you like the animalic dirty leather Oud? Yep. Shocking. <laughs> um, but I actually like this one, this new look. Um, I, I saw this great, uh, I don't know, documentary on Netflix about Christian Dior and New Look was a fashion... Movement, right? Kind of movement, yeah. It was after, um, it was after the war and uh, Dior said he wanted to make women look like flowers. So it's a narrow waist and a billowing skirt. Um, but this is not um, an especially feminine fragrance, actually, which is unexpected. Um, the Before we get into that, though, maybe what are the notes? Yeah, yeah. So it was launched in 2010 as part of the Dior Privé collection. So it's been a good seven years for this to be around. The perfumer, of course, is Francois de Machy. He's always creating perfumes for Dior. He's the in-house perfumer. And uh, this is a 250ml bottle and it retails for $300 plus tax in the States. I think it's a little higher in, in Europe. It's a, a lot of juice. It's a lot of juice, yes. And for notes, what we've got, uh, dominant notes, we'll start with a dominant note. Ylang Ylang, Tuberose. Benzoin or Benzoin, vanilla, iris, rose, peony, and jasmine. So, lots of flowers. With all those florals, I would expect it to be a very feminine uh, fragrance. Unexpectedly, it is not. Do you think it's unisex or more masculine leaning feminine fragrance? Because we have an audience here of men watching these videos. Mm -hmm. And do you think. Uh, I think a man can wear it. You definitely think so? Um, definitely. Uh, I, think, I, I think it is unisex. Unexpectedly, given that the new look fashion was so feminine, I would have expected the fragrance to be very feminine. And it's, even with all of these um, light florals, it is unexpectedly unisex. What do you think causes it to be more unisex? Do you think it's the benzoin or the iris? I, I was going to say, I mean, it must be because the benzoin is the only listed component that I don't associate with more feminine fragrances. But rose can also be masculine. Mm -hmm. um, iris can be masculine. Iris can be masculine. Shall we smell? Oh yeah, I have it on my... my... I have it on my, on my hand too, but I actually really enjoyed this one and I didn't think I was gonna enjoy it. It's so funny because I always say this, it's like never judge a book by its cover. It's just like wear it and see it before you go, okay, this is not for me. And that's exactly what happened here. On this strip, it is, um, it's the peony actually and the ylang ylang that uh, I noticed first a bright citrusy sort of light airy um, but it, it deepens pretty quickly that benzoin I think it's warmed up with the benzoin benzoin is a resin or benjoin and it's vanillic it's very vanillic it's one of my favorite resins because it has that vanillic touch to it this isn't a vanilla bomb this is a fragrance that I think is extremely accessible a lot of people new to fragrance or uh, in the fragrance community for a, a while now, uh, could appreciate this. Um, it doesn't remind me of anything. There, it doesn't make me think of another fragrance. Great for daytime, very wearable. Uh, I would, I would say this is a spring fragrance. What do you think? I think it's an all year round, but it's very springy with the notes. Mm -hmm. Although that Benjoin again is warming it up, so it makes it a little more appropriate for like a colder days. Yeah. So fall, maybe. It might be nice in the, in the, a colder uh, season when you're looking ahead to spring, um, <laughs> which maybe that's kind of part of it as well. What's interesting, though, is on the strip, I get the ylang ylang uh, and the, um, what else, maybe the, some other flower. Uh, 
not as much the benzoin, but on skin, it is much more uh, resinous than I would have thought, but yet still very light and, um, and, and bright, which again, I wouldn't have, um, and, and that actually does kind of, the floral aspect does go with the new look because that was sort of the whole theme of the fashion movement. Um, to me on the strip, it's ylang ylang, yeah. tuberose, and iris. The iris is really big here on the strip. Most of the tuberose that I have in my collection or that I've uh, been inspired to wear has been a very heavy night time kind of, you know, the, the classic white floral. Um, this is not that. Not at all. It's a very green tuberose. It's a, and also it has jasmine. Jasmine can be, a lot of people say it's very fecal. I don't get that impression of it. I do. Yeah, a lot of, I, uh, I keep hearing that. I'm, I. It, it can be really dirty. My skin just kind of absorbs all the... The fecalness? The fecal skank of jasmine and tuberose. And well, this I'm is not fecal at all. At all, but it has jasmine and it has tuberose, but it's the very... It's just a very light touch. To me, I think the ylang ylang is not a very... I don't know. Ylang ylang comes off not too floral to me. Well, it's citrus. It's because it's, it's greenish. Um, it is... It's always... You're right. For me, ylang ylang always uh, resonates or associates as a citrus or a fruit. It, it isn't, for whatever reason. Maybe that's kind of balancing out, brightening up some of the other And making it not so feminine. It, it's very unisex. So do you think this is niche then? Do you think it smells niche? You do? My, I think it's actually very designer, and I think it's very accessible to both niche and uh, lovers of designer fragrances. What I would say is niche about it is uh, a lot of time florals are very heavy, very, um, and for as many flowers that are ingredients in this or components of this, it's not a very floral uh, effect. It doesn't, it doesn't have a very floral uh, impression. That is unique and that might be niche. What about, do you think it's a niche or more? To me, it's like a, a more expensive quality designer. I find the fragrance to be very elegant, mm. classy, but more feminine leaning than masculine. Safe for work? Yeah. Um, I think somebody could wear this day and night. It can be going out, but not... I bet this would layer very well. You think? Oh yeah, definitely. If you had a... Um... Maybe Molecule 1? Make, I, it, make, I it, make it more that. woody? That would make it more woody if a man was wearing this. Uh, if a woman was wearing this, Maybe even uh, just anything that you have that already has tuberose or that already has jasmine or that already has one of these floral notes uh, as a dominant component. I bet if you layered them, it would really emphasize the floral aspect in a way that on its own, it, it, it doesn't really. So you want to bring out the florals more? Yes. Well, what happens is this dries down uh, pretty powdery. Yeah, I was going to mention that powder is king here. Um, generally, that's not my jam. So I, I no? probably, no. The effect is uh, sort of clean, um, like talcum powder, like someone who bathes, which is nice. It doesn't smell bad. I just generally don't go for powdery, personally. Okay. I usually like powdery, and I, I think I started falling in love with powdery because of Dior Homme, oh. that line of fragrances, which is also created by Francois de Mashi. Uh -huh. So he's probably using the same iris in here that he uses in Dior Homme, that whole line of fragrances. So I, I, I love powdery now. It doesn't bother me. And some people go, oh, no, powdery, hell no. Powdery, I mean, powdery can be feminine. Mm -hmm. And it's from the iris. For someone who has the budget and for somebody who is very comfortable with designers and maybe was looking to kind of diversify and try something different, this would be very good to try. I think this would work, uh, man or woman. Um, for somebody who's really, really into niche and just wanted something different and light for daytime, I think I think this is more daytime, but likes powder, powdery smell, smells, this might be a good one. I might re re take, I might just re jump again. in. Uh, no, I might just want to say, I don't find it to be very fresh. No? Something about the benzoin and the vanilla kind of weighs it down and makes it not so airy. So a disclaimer is that I actually love animalics and beast mode kind of bombs. So for my nose, this is extremely fresh and powdery and clean. I just don't think like, I, anytime I associate fresh, I would never see the, the notes of benzoin and 
vanilla. Yeah, it, it's it's light. not citruses. It's there's no citruses here. The lang the lang ylang, ylang, ylang maybe a little bit, but it's all white flowers and rose and peony and of course iris. It could also be the peony. That is a lighter floral for sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I just get you? Totally. It. That's so fresh. I mean, it starts off fresh, but it warms up a lot. I think this could be worn by people of all ages, which is another, to go back to your earlier question about um, niche versus designer. Um, I, I don't think, I think that somebody very young could wear this. I think somebody older could wear this. Um, and I, I do think it's very versatile. That's the word I'm looking for. And you think a man can pull this off? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's not that, it's not super floral. Um, any, any guy who's comfortable wearing rose geranium would be fine with this. Okay. So new look 1947 from the Dior Privé collection. Have you tried it? Are you curious to try it? Do you like floral fragrances? Do you like resins like benzoin? Let us know, put it in the comments section and let us know if you like those kind of notes and if you like these kind of fragrances and if you've tried Dior Privé. The giveaway is, what's your favorite flower? Oh yeah, you have to tell us your favorite flower. Tell us your favorite flower in the comment my name, section. My name is Dahlia. Yeah, she's the name. She's named Which after Which is a flower. a flower. Not that I'm stacking the vote here, but tell us your favorite flower <laughs> um, and let us know why you're interested in this giveaway. And then also please list your state because this is open to USA residents only. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. This is, uh, if anything, a very, if anything, this is a very green tuberose. Sorry, we have a little fly flying around. I don't know where it came from, but it's been flying around, making us really nervous here, but. Yeah, if you see our eyes wandering, it's because we're following it. And like at some point, one of us is gonna try to Miyagi that, that fly. But, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, back to the point. Uh, floral. Um, we're just talking about. So, all oh right. So. It's